Here goes nothing. Hey, thought I'd show you how I'm adding a 240 volt outlet to my garage so I can run a compressor and a welder. This is the compressor. It's been sitting like this now for just about three years. Uh, this garage where I'm living right now has no 240 volt outlets. All it has is a single 120 volt outlet here in the wall and another one up there in the ceiling. Obviously that doesn't give me a lot of options for plugging in this compressor or a welder. So my plan is to add an outlet for 240 volts here. I've previously removed some sheetrock from the wall up here to get me some access into this panel. And down here where I'm going to actually add the outlet I think this has the potential to not be a good situation, so I hope it goes well. I hope I can find this wire when it comes out the bottom. I don't know if it's pushing, I think it's just bending. Not looking good. It should be there by now, but I'm not feeling it yet. Got it. There we go. I got the wire through the got the wire through the wall. I'm gonna smack this knockout and make a way for the wire to get into this box. Need the bigger knockout on the box so I can get the wire into it. This is big wire. Now I'm going to put this three quarter inch cable connector into this box and that's what will secure the wire to the box. Okay, now that's ready to accept that wire through that connector into the box. Loosen up these screws so the wire will fit through the connector. Now I just push this wire through this connector in the box. Make sure I've got enough through there to make the connections that I need to do inside the box. Man, that is some thick wire. There we go. Now tighten these screws down on the connector. All right. That ought to hold it. I gotta strip this. Back so I can get the different strands of wire out that I need to connect to the to the receptacle. Okay, I've opted to use one of these. Uh, where is it? There it is. You see that? Not very well. One of these lay-in lugs to ground this box. And I'll run the ground wire through this hole, tighten it 
tighten this screw down on the ground wire and then screw this lug into the back of the box and that'll ground it. I think most people probably use a pigtail. But I didn't want to have a wire nut in this box to make fighting this number six wire any tougher than it already is. This is a nightmare. I don't have enough hands and I can't see what I'm doing. I don't know if you can see that lug in there in the back of that box or not. But the ground wire runs through it and now I just tighten this screw down on the ground wire and that should ground this box. And the other end of this ground wire will go into the receptacle. All right, that should take care of grounding this new outlet. Before I put the receptacle in this box, I'm going to put the box back into the hole and get it mounted to the stud in the wall. I've got an ex I, where are you? There you are. I've got an extension that I'm going to put on this box before I close it up. That'll push this flush mount receptacle out even with this 5 8 inch sheetrock. But right now, I'm just going to put this box in the wall flush with the, the front of this stud in the wall. And uh, that should work out if I've got all my stuff figured out right. Okay, I decided to uh, put the extender on the box while I was putting it back in the hole and mount it to the stud. I decided that'd be the easiest way to do that. I didn't film any of that. It was kind of a fiasco. Um, I've got the box mounted to the stud in the wall now. I've got the wire fed through there. So now I'm gonna cut some Cut the wire, some of the extra wire off and strip it and uh, start putting it into this receptacle. I, I bought a, can you see that? I think they call that a 1450 receptacle. It's a four wire receptacle. And the reason I'm using this one is because this uh, air compressor was, I had it set up in the home I lived in before I moved here. And this was the style of uh, outlet that was in my garage there. So that's how I wired up my air compressor. So I'm gonna duplicate that here so I don't have to rewire the air compressor. I figured if I had to do two things, you know, it'd be t twice as hard. So I'm just gonna put in this receptacle and not have to rewire the compressor. So that's why I'm using this four wire, uh, I think they call it a 1450 NEMA receptacle. receptacle. Anyway, I'm gonna cut some of this wire off and get it stripped and uh, start trying to wire this thing in. This wire is really, really stiff, really thick. So it's gonna to be tough to, to get this thing wired up and shoved back in this box. It's always scary cutting wire because you don't, you can't stretch it out again once it's cut. God, that is some freaking thick wire. If I was an electrician, I'd have all the right tools, but I'm not, so I just use what I have. Okay, I've got about a half an inch of insulation stripped off of these three uh, six gauge conductors in this wire. Now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, see if I can put these in the back of the receptacle and get it wired up. Okay, so this top, this, this rounded one, more rounded, uh, is for the ground, that's where the bare copper wire goes. Both of these sides are for the hot. Each one of those will get 120 volts, it'll make up 240 between the two of them. And this one down here is gonna be for the white wire and that's the neutral wire. So it'll be red, black, green, and white. So I just need to make sure that I get those, the correct wires in the correct spot as I flip this thing upside down to get the wires in the back of this plug and get it wired up. Okay, so the way this works is uh, there are holes on the bottom side of this receptacle. And that's where you put the wires. 
and then you tighten down these screws. This is hard working in the camera when you everything's backwards. And you tighten those down. They gotta be really good and tight so if you can make sure you got a really good connection on those. So that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do now is start by probably putting the 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 neutral in the white wire. It's gonna be on the bottom, so I think the way these wires are laid out, that's gonna be the first one that needs to go in there. And then I'll do the the black and the red or red and black, however that shakes out. And then I'll figure out where I need to cut that ground to put the ground in. The ground actually goes in on the side. Uh, the neutral, the two hops go in on the bottom. The ground goes in on the side of this receptacle. Right there, somewhere in there, right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. I, it goes without saying, I hope that uh, the other end of this wire is connected to nothing right now, so I'm not exposed to enter any electricity. All of this work that I've been doing has been done without any wire, even in the fuse or a breaker panel. I guess we don't use fuses anymore, but in the breaker panel. After I get these all done, that's going to be my next step, is to open up the panel and do what needs to be done there. It's going to take some serious pushing to get these wires to fold back into this box, so these connections have got, got to be really tight so that you don't pull anything out of the back of the plug when you're shoving the plug back in the box. So when I was trying to figure out what I needed to do this little project, of course the wire size is based on the amperage that you're going to be pulling. The compressor will only pull about, I think it said 28 amps. Uh, it, there's, it's labeled different on two different places on the compressor. The motor says I think 21 and the plate for the compressor itself it says uh, either 27 or 28 so I could probably get by with a 30 amp breaker for that but the welder's going to draw more than that so I'm going with a 50 amp breaker which I realize puts the compressor at risk but that's the way I had it set up where I lived before and that I had an electrician help me get that set up so I assume that he had that set up in a way that works out the way it needs to be come on baby get in there man that's a nightmare Maybe I should have just bagged the welder. That way I could have used some smaller wire. This whole thing would have been a lot easier. Okay, I've got those three fat wires in there now. I'm gonna figure out where I need to cut this ground and get that cut off. And then I'll be able to shove this thing back in that box. Yeah, I got this ground wire cut. Gonna put it in there and screw it down. <clears throat> all right, now we just gotta figure out how to fit all this junk in this box. It's just gonna take a whole lot of shoving and pushing and screaming and yelling, I'm guessing. Okay, I got this receptacle kind of starting to go into this box. So I'm going to use these screws to help me get it all the rest of the way in there. These are the mounting screws for the receptacle to go into the box. I'll tell you what, this six gauge wire is stiff. I don't know if this is legal. Or I should say an acceptable 
method to use to get the wires back into this box, but man, I couldn't see it. It's too stiff to go any other way. I'm gonna try to push this receptacle as far to the left as I can get it, because I know that when I cut this hole in the sheetrock, What I did is I found the stud up above where I took that big patch of sheetrock off to get access to the to the breaker panel and then I, I located that stud up there and used my level to locate where I figured that stud would be down here where this box is at. And when I cut my hole out, I found out I was off about three eighths of an inch. I guess that stud's got a little bit of bow to it. So if I shove this receptacle a little bit towards that extra wide side of the hole, hopefully it'll help cover up that empty spot a little bit so it doesn't look quite as bad. That's my goal anyway. Because I don't know that I want to try to patch that little 3 8 inch gap there. All right, I'm gonna say that's about good. Now we'll get the plate and put the cover plate on it now. Okay, let's go ahead and put this cover plate on. There we go. I was freaked out for a minute because none of the holes were lining up. I thought I was gonna have to go shopping again. Got the wrong screwdriver. There we go. Ooh, don't lose that screw. Well, it looks like from here anyway, I haven't got the screws tightened up yet, but I don't think that's gonna look too bad. Put it on there just a little bit cockeyed. There's just a little teeny gap on that left side. I think that'll pass. All right, that's its new home. Now I've just got to do the rest of it. I got to do everything that goes on in the in the breaker panel. Okay, these are the breakers that are in this panel in this box right now. You look over here, you see there's an empty place there. And uh, I'm planning on utilizing that to put the 50 amp breaker in for this new outlet. Uh, I'll use this space and this space, and I'll free this space up by coming down to here and pulling this breaker out, putting in a tandem breaker, similar to this one right here, except it'll be a 20 amp breaker, so it, it uh, is two breakers, but it only utilizes one space. And I'll plug these bath outlets and these kitchen CFGI, GFCI into it. And uh, I determined that I need to come down to this one from this schematic over here on the other side of the panel. Let me show you that. Okay, if you look at this, it shows one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten slots on each side of this panel. Down here, these last, these bottom five, one, two, three, four, five, show that they can accept a tandem breaker, but these top five cannot. So that's why I need to move uh, one of those breakers. I'll need to put the tandem breaker down here in this, in this, it's the sixth, one, two, three, four, five, six slot down instead of just the fifth slot down. So that's why I need to set that up, to set those breakers up the way I described it. So obviously I'm not gonna get into this breaker with the power on. Uh, that means I won't have any lights. 
since it's too dark outside to lift the garage door and be able to see what I'm doing, I'm gonna have to put this part of this task off until another day when I can get at it earlier and uh, open the garage door so I'll have light in the garage while I turn the power off. All right, it's a new day and I'm gonna continue working on this outlet in my garage for my welder and compressor. I've got the panel off. Uh, I've already verified with my multimeter that there's no power in this box by checking all the, the lines coming in from the main power breaker. So I'm gonna go ahead and start by removing the uh, this number, this six breaker down, one, two, three, four, five, six, that will be replaced with the tandem breaker. Start by uh, taking the wire out of it that goes to the kitchen GFCI. And I'm also gonna take this one, two, three, fourth breaker out as well on that one which goes to the bathroom outlets is going to be hooked up to the new tandem breaker that will go in this spot. Both of these lines are already labeled so I know which one's which. I'm going to get ready to put them back in there. So now they're both unhooked and I just got to pull the breakers. Here's a new tandem breaker I'm going to install in that spot. Uh, if you look right here, you can see where the wires will go in. So I'll just go ahead and put those in there and get them tightened up and put the breaker in the box. There's one wire. There's the other. Make sure they're tight. Okay. Now we just hook this breaker on the one edge. Like that, and then click it down in on the other edge. And that should take care of that. Looks like everything is going to work out good. We got the kitchen GFCI and the bathroom outlets. All right, that freed up my, my two spots I need for my big breaker for this new outlet. But before I put that breaker in there, I'm going to go ahead and run this, this wire down into this box and get it ready. First off, I've got to get this knockout out of the way so I can put the connector in there. Okay, now I'm going to put this connector in the top of this box. Yeah. The sun's coming out. That's a good thing, I guess. Yeah. There we go. All right, now I just gotta wrestle that wire down through there. That might be the toughest part of this whole thing. Got screwdrivers everywhere. There we go. All right, now I got to Tighten that clamp down around the wire as it goes through the top of that box. Got to find my screwdriver first. That shouldn't go anywhere now. Now I've got to strip the sheathing off of this wire so I can get the wire run where it needs to go. Okay. 
Now I just need to fish these strand, different strands of wire to where they need to be. Uh, this bare copper ground's got to go over here to this grounding lug over here on this side. This white neutral's got to come down here to this uh, bar on this side, and then I'll work these other, the red and black, down to where they need to be to plug into that breaker. I've got screwdrivers everywhere except for where I can find them. There it is. Let's start about there. Here we go. these glasses on I can't see what I'm doing half the time okay now I'm gonna work this white neutral wire down to its lug spot on the lug bar Jeez. it's like wrestling with a bunch of snakes Can't see nothing anymore. There we go. Okay, now we just got to get the hots back to, down to the uh, to the breaker. You've seen me wrestle with this wire probably enough, so I'm not going to record this. Okay, I've got these uh, hot wires wrestled to where I think I want them. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put them in this breaker and then uh, we'll try to get the breaker installed and make sure the wires are all sitting where they need to be and go from there. I'm going to check the screws on all these breakers, make sure they're tight after having pushed all this wire around in here and make sure none of them have come loose or pulled loose. Okay, I think that's everything done up in this box. I'm going to put the cover back on it now and we'll flip power on and see what happens. All right, I'm gonna go flip the power on and see what happens. I didn't hear any popping or see any flames or anything. Lights came on, so that, that's a good sign. I'm going to flip this this uh, this tandem 20 amp breaker on, and then go check the outlets that it fed before I changed it up. 
let you know how that goes. Okay, everything that I determined was on those two 20 amp circuits that I replaced the breakers with a tandem breaker are working and on in the house. So now all I guess I have to do is turn on this new one and see if anything blows up here. No fire, no sparks. Can't smell anything burning yet. I'm gonna check it now with my multimeter. I'm not gonna lie, this scares the crap out of me. I love what electricity does for me, but I'm scared to death of it, so. If I light up and die before your eyes, uh, it's nice knowing you. Okay, I'm gonna put this black lead on the negative up here. And the red one on one of these hots. And I have nothing. There we go. 123.8. Now let's check this other side. Hundred twenty three point two. Okay, I was finally able to get this thing to test. I don't know that the probes on this cheap little multimeter are long enough to get into the back of this uh, 240 volt receptacle. I was able to get 123 volts from each hot to the ground, from each hot to the neutral. I think I got 247 between the two hots. And then I was also able to uh, get the 123 or whatever it was from each one of the hots to this, to this plate, this cover plate, which tells me that the box and the plate and all those things are grounded as well. So as far as I can tell, this thing's done and it's working right. Now I'm gonna see if I can't uh, get it to turn my compressor on. Here goes nothing. Sweet sound. I've been waiting three years to hear that sound. I'm glad this all seemed to work out. All right, I've relabeled the the breaker panel now with the correct labels for those new breakers I put in there the way I reconfigured it and uh, compressors running everything seems to be working all I've got to do now is, is plug that hole up with sheetrock and this project will be done anyway uh, another one of those sequences that gets me closer to being able to do the things I wanted to do thanks for watching <laughs>